Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 119 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, where I'm making compost, courtesy of a few rats helping me out. Hey rats, how you guys doing? Compost is, um, spoiler alert, pretty slow, so I'm learning. Uh, so we've got the composter over here-ish. Uh, the composting hut. So Annabelle's doing a good job of composting things. Uh, basically, it looks like they bring her seeds or wheat, uh, and she drops them in the composting barrel, and after a period of time, they turn into compost, which then can be delivered elsewhere. That period of time, very, very long. Very, very long. Because I've got my whole set of rats down here. I forget how many, like six-ish. So we put 16 um, wheat into the barrel, uh, and it looks like you get about six compost uh, for 16 wheat is what it looks like. Other things, you can see there's different numbers, right? So if I use like golden apples, for example, it would be eight apples to six compost. Uh, you know, you can use wool, apparently, that's cool. Wool can be composted, uh, birch leaves, all kinds of stuff. But it looks like you almost always get 16 as the output. It's just how much of the input uh, is needed. And uh, I'm gonna tell you that I think it was about 10 minutes ago that I put this compost into this barrel without the rats, because I wanted to place them next to each other and be like, let's see what's faster, right? You know, rats tick accelerating versus rats not tick accelerating. I, I think, and I haven't been perfectly going with it, but we've had at least, you know, 10 or 12 iterations of compost completion from the rats barrel. We've had zero of these compost barrels convert into, you know, what it needs to be. So basically what happens is it's a, it's a barrel without the lid on top. Once the barrel is full of composting material, the lid is automatically rendered. So you don't have to put the lid on yourself. It just shows up like by itself. And then when it's done composting, the lid is removed automatically and you get green particle effects indicating that it's done. The particle effects that we're seeing here are tick accelerated. So you're seeing a lot more than you would normally. Um, so that's what it looks like, right? So click it out, click it in. You can see it just renders full, has a lid on top. And when it's done, it just stops rendering the lid. Um, so you'll see that, you know, about how long it takes to compost material. Now, the reason I'm composting is I need some compost to unlock the next research or two uh, that I'm working towards in my research area. Um, and it looks like, you know, some stuff's being done over there. Look at my uh, university. We'll be checking it out in a moment here. And then we'll be getting to our chromatic compounds and to fancy acts and back to nature's aura. Um, but if we were to... Do, 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 Hey, give me all my rats. Oh, I didn't mean to click that, but whatever. It was five rats. Take, and this is just taking forever, um, that composting without the rats. So how are you doing, buddy? You've still got a good number of things to place. <sighs> lots and lots of building left to happen over here. But you can see the, uh, the upgrades coming along nicely. Um, now, what is funny is I just happened to come over here to do... I can't get into this room at the moment. <laughs> I'm thinking what's happening is he's in the middle of upgrading this area and I actually there's no way there's no good way in there but what I can do is shrink because boing, this little I can't get through there without shrink and I didn't want to I mean obviously I could break blocks right this is Minecraft we can break things but I was trying not to break the building that he was in the middle of working right um, so now I should be able to come over here to pods all and unlock the flower shop which is cool and uh, let it grow. So I need 16 compost for let it grow. And that's cool. And that gets you the plantation, awesome. Farmers harvest plus 10% crops, pods all. Composters get 100% more pods all. Hmm, neat. Uh, but this way we'll let the research occur for those two things. And remember the next thing I'm working towards is the dyer's hut. So I want to make the dyer. Uh, we should probably also look towards getting, um, shrink, shrink out. Uh, we should also look totally towards getting other things, but, you know, we'll, we'll get there. I should get the sheep farm going. It's really what I should do. Um, but I'm thinking we'll do, like, the flower shop and then the sheep farm next to it. And then we'll have the dyer's hut between the two, or behind the two. So once I unlock the dyer's hut... No, the flower shop. Yeah, the flower shop. And then the sheep farm. And then the dyer's hut. And that should all be cool. And this will kind of be, like, the corner back here where all that happens. Sound like a plan? I guess we'll find out. Uh, you guys have had enough time to make your way into bed, so if you're not sleeping yet, that's on you, villagers. Right? Everybody, you know, has had more than enough time to make their way to their beds. 
so it's all good. So I'm gonna let the university continue upgrading in the background here. You can see it's obviously a work in progress, but it's getting there. It's getting there and it's looking good. Looking real good. Uh, and wow, this is still going. I'm just gonna break it, I think, at this point, right? I don't think I don't think we need any more manual. And uh, you know. Boy, is he taking a long time. Like a really long time. Like a really, really long time. It's all good though. Cool. All right, back home, where we're gonna make some chromaticness, chromatic compounds. Now, if I remember correctly, it's something to do with glowstone. And if I have to go Google this, I will, but I feel like it's something to do with glowstone. You drop your chromatic compound on the ground, make sure your magnet is disabled. Boy, I hope I'm right about this. Um, Cause I honestly don't know. Oh yeah, look, he ate the, he ate the glowstone, nice. And I want to say it's eight pieces of glowstone. I want to say it's going to be eight pieces of glowstone. But he's going to absorb the light of the glowstone. And I think he can do the ones in the corners around it. See him doing that? That's cool. And I want to say it's about eight pieces that he's going to need to eat. And I think the sunlight helps too, by the way. I'm not sure about that, though. I remember from my mod spotlight when I did it, I was like, how does this work again? Because it's actually not documented in JEI, and I think it's meant to be kind of a, you know, a little bit of a figure it out for yourself kind of deal. Forged in the void. Forged from absorbed light. So it's kind of like a little hintity hint hint and you figure it out yourself kind of deal. So, hey, there we go. Nice, bright and inspiring. Now it just occurs to me, I think I remember this stuff like, doesn't get affected by gravity. So grab it real quick or be prepared to grab it real quick. Um, you know, at such point that, you know, it'll be, it'll be, it's gonna eat the glow and it's gonna fly away if you're not careful. You'll see, we'll let it, we'll let it do that this time and see what happens. Um, and we'll see what the chromatic item looks like, but I'm pretty sure it starts floating away once it's absorbed all this light, which is hilarious. Uh, but once we have two of these, we should be good to make our deforester, and that will be awesome because the deforester is pretty stinking cool. It's about time we get a tree capitati ish axe in the series. Um, blah, blah, blah. Nice. Do, 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 do. I'm going to let you absorb it out. I don't know if there's a random amount of glowstone it needs to eat or if it's always nine. Um, but last time it was nine, and we'll see what happens here. I forget if I placed extras, but. And again, he might also be absorbing from the sun. I don't really remember the details, but whatever I'm doing here is working and we're gonna leave it be. Throw down a few more glowstones. We'll probably just, there we go. See it floating away now? <laughs> um, I think it's, I think it's just not affected by gravity. So it kind of just, it will float away entirely too. Can I hit it? I don't even know. All right, well, you're mine now. Thank you. So that's how you make um, refined radiance, right? We're gonna take that to make our deforester, which is a good time, right? We can get rid of you guys now. Sweet. And I'm gonna turn my magnet back on because that's gonna be important. You know me, can't live without my magnet. All right, now deforester, pretty stinking cool. You ready? Hello. How good is that? How good is that? Yes, please. That is beautiful. Now, remember last episode we came back, a big part of what we were doing was all about the shears, right? Um, <clears throat> so we want to come here to get some a bunch of leaves. And the reason I wanted the deforester is I knew that once I cleared all the leaves, I didn't want to just leave a bunch of, you know, trees laying around. So I wanted to be able to do that. And that's what's off, right? Isn't that good? It's so good. It's so good. All right, so then we can put you guys away and back into nature's aura. So there's another uh, tool for our tool belt. Here we are in episode 119, and we we made ourselves a tree capitati-ish thing. 
Was Tree Capitator, was that the first ever mod that did that mechanic? Um, I look at the Oculus got a, got a model update. How cool is that? That's awesome. The Oculus got a model update when we updated Man and Artifice. That's cool. Anyway, so let's get our gold leaf, right? So from Nature's Aura, uh, the main thing we want to start with is getting the, the bright fibers, right? Let's get, um, and we're going to need also some more shears because I need tall grass. I forgot about that. Luckily, that's easy peasy to get if I move away from my base. I always hated, I played Minecraft before tall grass existed. And so I got very used to playing the game when there wasn't tall grass, right? And so then once tall grass was added to the game, it was like, that's sloppy and messy looking. Which I know is ironic coming from me, Mr. Direwolf, who's the president of sloppy and messy. But like, it just, I didn't like the way it looked in the world all over the place. So like, when Batania came out with that horn that you can blow to get rid of tall grass, oh, that was the best ever. Um, but long story short, I very much, you know, was excited uh, to be able to get rid of that tall grass because I was not a huge fan. So let's come over here and let's plop down a couple of trees. Do I want to do this spaced out a little bit more? Um, because what we're after here is not the wood, but the leaves. So we want to make sure there's enough room for all the leaves. And what we can do is sigil the green grove this. And you guys will get affected by that, right? Yeah, yeah, you can see them particle affecting. Hello. Sweet. Now what you do is you place, um, you know, and obviously they're a little close together, but this is okay. It's totally fine that they're a little bit close together. Hello. Good job, sir. What I'm gonna do is plop down some of the gold leaf. And, and the brilliant fibers here will slowly convert um, the, the, the leaves into golden leaves from Nature's Aura. Now, if we F3 this, we might see what stage they're at. And I don't think you can speed it up with, you know, Sigil of the Green Grove type effects. Um, tick accelerators might do it. So let's try our rats and see if this is a tile entity that can be tick accelerated. I'm gonna call that a yes, right? And then they'll also spread to the adjacent leaves, which is cool, um, eventually. See, these are golden leaves. I didn't click this one, remember? I never clicked this leaf. So yay for rats being able to tick accelerate. And this one also got golden leaf treatment, right? So if I throw the rats down there, boom, boom, boom you know, and that's pretty cool. So over time, it will spread. So I'm just gonna plop these into random spots on the trees here, and then, you know, come back in a few minutes, and what we should see is a lot of these leaves converting to golden. They don't take too long to convert on their own, right? They're, they're I mean, they're not fast, per se, but they're not slow either. Now, what about watering can? Because I don't know if these are growth ticks that, because rats accelerate, remember, both growth ticks and tile entity ticks. So if these are growth ticks or tile entity ticks, I'm not 100% sure, right? So a watering can would accelerate the growth tick. It doesn't seem like it helped much. What else do we have that can do growth tick type stuff? Uh, I swore that there was a thing for this. Wasn't there a thing for this that did growth ticks? The green grove does a bone mealing effect, not growth ticks. Watering can does growth ticks, but was there anything else that did growth ticks? Hmm. Was there anything else that did growth ticks? I'm trying to remember. Crop growth. Oh, that's kind of cool. But not what I'm looking for. Lily pad of growth, that might be a thing. Fertile essence. That looks like it needs slimes. And I don't think we've killed a lot of slimes, do we? Have we killed any slimes? We have none of those. We have not a single one of these. Uh, it's because I'm in my, yeah, that's why. I was gonna say. Yeah, slime pearls is what's up. 
Uh, we would have to set up slimes for the for that. Um, yeah, that's a thing. So, well, we'll see. I think I'll probably just wind up being patient, which isn't my favorite thing to do. I should really, at some point, figure out um, a tick accelerating ritual from Astral. That would probably be the best way to speed up the the gold leaf that we would need here. But honestly, it shouldn't be too bad. What should happen is uh, once we get all those leaves converted to gold leaf, we'll be in a lot of good shape because we're not going to need too much more than that. So let's come back in a few minutes. I'm going to poke around. If I come up with a sneaky and fun way to make these grow faster, I will let you guys know. Obviously, rats do it. Um, I'll see if there's something else. I feel like I'm forgetting. There's been so many mods I've played with throughout the series so far. I feel like I'm forgetting something uh, that will do growth acceleration in an area, but uh, we'll see. All right, be right back. Oh, it's the mummies. Mummies have attacked. Curious what these guys do. Like, I'm a little curious to kind of let this attack happen. But I'm also like, no, my villagers. They'll be back. They definitely like attacking me, which is cool. Hey, look, here comes Thomas. And Thomas is running the other direction. Good job, Thomas. You're amazing at this guard stuff. Hey, there you go. They figured it out eventually. Juliana, aren't you also a guard? Am I wrong? Shouldn't you be attacking these guys? They're mummies shooting fire arrows in my village. <gasps> hey, good job, Wyatt. Wyatt killed somebody. Hey, Wyatt. Nice. Oh, Juliana's shooting with bows. That's what she's doing. She's a ranger. And I'm pretty sure the fire arrows they shoot don't actually start fires, so that's good news at least. I haven't seen anybody shooting fires. Only two raiders yet. Oh, was scared to death by a mummy. What, scared to death? Come on, that's not fair. I was purposely watching to make sure nobody died. Archer Maya M. Gorst. Well, look, Maya. I mean, I'm not sure what to do about that. Like, literally, your job was defense, right? Am I wrong? Okay. So which one were you? This is why it's barrack spot. I should build this level. Because this is a level 3 barracks now, right? Which means we get a third. Nice. Higher spies. Ooh, that's cool. And we could upgrade this thing if we wanted to. But I'm just going to get the, the next barracks. So where was Maya stationed at? Probably this one? Uh, adaptability and agility. So let's get a nice agility stat here. We don't have anybody who's great, but Sky looks pretty good, right? Let's take Sky. Sky can be a guard. I think Sky's gonna want a bow. That's hilarious to me. <laughs> like, one of the guards responsible for defending the village was like, oh, I'm scared to death. What? What? Explain to me how you're. What? Scared to death? Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't be scared to death. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous is what I say to that. I could understand if it was a regular citizen was scared to death by a mummy. Okay, cool. But, like, your literal job is defense. And it's not even like the mummy, like, hurt you. It was just like, I got scared and I died. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I guess I would personally be scared to death if I saw a real-life mummy. I mean, I don't know about scared to death. I'd be scared. I don't know about scared to death. I don't know. Call me crazy. Anyway, uh, back to Nature's Aura. I just, the, the attack came and I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a supervisional-y stuff. Uh, so we'll, we'll come back in a minute once more of these guys. You can tell it, like, the attack happened the second I was done, right? Um... Let's see. I would like to see this thing spread. Is there an upgrade to this that I can do? Maybe hold more water? Looks like there's augments. It's neat. Yeah, I'm just curious if watering can equals faster 
growth. I'm just curious because if it does work, then what I would say is that's cool, right? So this is a one by one block, which means it'll only focus on growing these golden leaves. It's not looking like it's helping, is it? It's still at stage one over there. Definitely doesn't look to be helping. Yeah, no, definitely not. I think stage three is what we want. Hooray! And I got my first piece of gold leaf, which by the way, converts into gold powder. Awesome. So I'll come back in a few minutes here once I've gotten a little bit more of this, you know, happening. So now that we've gotten the brilliant trees taken care of and we got the golden dust stuff, we can now do a ritual of the forest. When starting out as a magical botanist, it proves beneficial to use the powers of nature on a more direct level before delving directly into aura itself. The ritual of the forest uses properties of gold powder to incorporate the power of natural ingredients directly into a fresh growing tree. Devouring it in the process, but at the same time, transforming it into useful tools and items. To construct this ritual, one has to place gold powder in the configuration shown on the next page with some wooden stands around that, which, uh, which will hold the ingredients. Then the correct sapling must be placed in the middle, and either through some kind of fertilizer or through the inevitability of time, its growth will cause the ritual to start. Cool. Uh, so basically what we do here is we build these wooden stands, we place them around, we place gold powder in the world, uh, around a sapling and when uh, what you do to craft is you place items on the wooden pillars and then when the tree grows it completes the craft so either use bone meal or you know whatever mechanic to cause growth right and here's some of the recipes that you can make uh, in this right so you put these items on the pedestals around the sapling you put the sapling in the middle when it grows it'll consume the gold dust on the ground which works just like redstone dust basically um, so doing our first one of these uh, would be a cool way to move forward. Now, um, let's see, natural items, elemental ocular. Is this a thing? It is. I might want to make environmental ocular. Um, it's a very useful, however, a lot of magical botanists struggle with its limited range of gauging aura in the environment around them. Um, yeah. Oh, I see. So the environmental eye is what we want, not the ocular. Environmental eye. Yeah, that's one of the first rituals we can do, but it's not showing in my book yet. So I'm assuming that means that it's locked. So maybe um, we need to do one ritual at least before we can move forward. So maybe we should do one of these tokens of joy. That might be a good one to do. Can I add that to the to-do list from here? We can add a bookmark, but uh, I think what we wanna make is a token of joy. And there's definitely a JEI integration here, which is most welcome. We're going to need bottled sunlight, though, uh, which I'm trying to remember if that is something I know how to make already. Shift click for recipe. Interesting. Maybe I have to build, you know what I probably have to do is just craft these guys, the wooden stands, to get started. So let's just get a few, right, of these. Um, the number of wooden stands we need is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we need the, for the stands, you need the actual gold leaf. No biggie. Um, just make sure that what you're breaking is actually level three. I think they have these glowing particle effects to indicate when they're good and grown. Or you can F3 it. Cool. Good enough for me. All right. So that should be... Sweet. Powers of the Forest. And that unlocked new chapters now. Oh, there you go. There's Aura Bottling. Um creating aura and the environmental eye. That's what I wanted to make. That's what I wanted to make. So that's cool. Um, so we will totally do that. So let's make an environmental eye first because that's one of the next things to make. This will let us see the amount of aura in the area around me, the player. Um, so let's go set up an area for nature's, uh, nature's aura mod. Right. I'm thinking I cleared out this area behind my windmill an episode or two back. I'm thinking this might be a good place to do it. 
Uh, so what I'm thinking is we'll do the ritual of the forest. I can visualize that and then decide to place it somewhere. You know, like let's let's just not too close to our windmill, but also not too far. And then that'll be cool, right? So let's first lay down our wooden stands, okay? Boop, 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 boop. Perfect. And then uh, we're gonna need more gold powder probably for this. Now the gold powder does get consumed in this process. So we're gonna wanna, you know, be aware of that. I'm trying to decide if this is a 100% chance or not, or if I'm breaking them before they're tier three. See, that was definitely stage three, right? Eh, we'll see. We'll let it go. Um, so let's get a few more of these powders. See, I told you, you didn't like super need to to make that thing perfect. Um, now, yeah, that seems fine. I'm debating how I want to automate this because I'd like I'd like to see about automating this in this playthrough. Um, the whole pro like I'd love to do click button place dusts, and I'd like to do it in a cool way that's not just you know fourteen dispensers place in the world right like I want to do it in a neat way if I can um I'll have to think that one through a little bit better how that would work but if we want to make the eye I have a problem clicking down there today for some reason the environmental lie we're going to need a spider eye two gold leaf and a gold ingot okay so we might need to extend our transmitter over here a little bit spider eye two gold leaf and a gold ingot. Cool. Hey, look, the new barracks have been built. Nice. And I don't think it matters where on the pedestal you put these things. So like, you don't have to put it anywhere specific. You just do that, right? And the environmental eye, spider eye, two gold leaf and an ingot. Cool. Then we place a sapling down and that completes the, the ritual thing. And then when we grow the tree, that's when the crafting will occur. Cool. So you could just leave the tree alone. It would grow naturally. Or you can use bone meal or sigil the green grove, however you want to do it. So it consumes the items on the pedestals. The particle effects go crazy. And then boom, the tree is consumed. The sapling is obviously gone. Uh, the gold powder is gone. But the, the wooden stands remain. How cool is that? I think that's cool, right? I think it's cool. Now, uh, what we might want to do is visualize this ritual again. Because what I'm gonna do, so that we don't always have to visualize the ritual for the time being until I figure out how I wanna automate this. Something like that. Cool. And then we don't need to visualize no more. Right, and then we know that the sapling goes in the center of that and all the gold powder dust goes on the bricks. Does that work? And now check that out in the top left corner, we can see how much aura is around at the moment. So this is, uh, goes into a, into a curio slot. Um, it's the charm slot. Uh, so if you wanna put it in your charm slot, you can see how much aura in the top left. If you wanna hold it in your inventory, that also works too. Um, and that's the normal amount of aura. So you might think, oh, it's half empty, no. No, that's what you want. You want it to be right there. There's actually, I don't know how well you can see it on the video. It's even hard to see me playing. Oh, look, there we go. So see, there's like a little line there. That's, it's just below where it's 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 at right now, but there's this really thin black line. Um, that's the normal amount of aura, right? So, so traveling around, there's some hot spots, right? But generally speaking, this is standard aura. If you go above that, you start having extra aura and get some of those positive effects. If you go below that, you start causing some negative effects. So keep that in mind. Now we saw a minute ago, one of the crafting recipes we're gonna need in a bit requires some bottled aura. Um, so this is actually pretty straightforward. Um, you need a bottle and cork, which looks like this. So a glass bottle with some oak and you'll get a bottle and cork, right? Um, so then you just right click in the world with it in your hand, right? So let's do cork, bottle and cork. 
And I believe that all you do is just right click it in the world and then it grabs a taste of sunlight. Uh, now there's other kinds of aura, remember? So there's bottled sunlight, but there's going to be other kinds of aura that we're gonna find when we get to the nether. And I believe the end has its own version of the aura and stuff that you can do there. Um, so the next major thing to make is the natural altar. When collecting aura from the world, a distinctive question for any human to ask would be, how come one make use of this? This category houses entries that will explain just that. So the natural altar is the next um, major component of, of the mod, the next crafting mechanic, if you will. Um, basically, it allows you to craft uh, certain items, like you can turn iron ingots into infused iron ingots. You can turn uh, stone into infused rock. And I think there's other things that it can make in the future, but I'm not super sure. But this guy is going to be your, your first you know, foray into it. Um, we're going to need some golden stone bricks. We're going to handful of things, right? But to get started, what we're going to need is that token of joy. So let's go make that token of joy, if we may. Uh, so the token of joy is going to be a bottled sunlight, a torch. I think that's any flower. Apple, iron, gold leaf, right? So apple, iron, gold leaf. And I, and I should really look at extending um, the range over to here. Let's, get, let's do that real fast. Let's get a wireless transmitter just so I can easily you know i'm gonna do it between episodes because we're getting close to the end of the episode here so i'll do that in a minute but let's get our apple iron gold leaf torch sunlight and any flower right okay So any flower, torch, any flower, torch, gold leaf, iron, apple, sunlight, iron, sunlight, apple, and then we grow a tree. Hello, sir. Oh, I forgot the derpy dyer. I forgot the thingy mabobber with the, the dust around it. I knew I was forgetting something. Doesn't hurt, not a big deal. Takes literal seconds to fix that derp. But uh, yeah, we need to get more gold powder more than likely. How are we doing over here? Nice. See, we got there in the end. Just be patient, it'll happen. I know, it's dire saying be patient. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, just go with it. So for the record, you need 16 dust to do a single ritual. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. And that equates to eight gold leaf to do a single ritual. Okay. Token of joy. And I think we get two of those per craft. So that's cool. So token of joy is complete. Uh, what we want to do next then is real quick make the nature altar right the natural altar uh and this thing has i believe you know quite a few recipes that will eventually be unlocked from it as you can see right some pretty cool stuff that we can get going eventually um but for now we're just going to focus on the basics right um so the natural altar needs gold leaf three stone and gold one two three and a gold a gold leaf and a token of joy. Gold leaf and a token of joy. And then we're going to need more. Of this. Right. And remember, you need 16 powder. So again, I would like to find a way to automate the powder placement, just as like a for fun kind of thing. I mean, I don't know that automating the whole ritual is necessary, because I doubt that there's a lot of things that we need in large quantities enough to automate, but maybe, we'll see. I'm pretty sure you can like hopper into the wooden stands, for example. We would just have to deploy these, trigger the growth of the redstone signal. There's obviously ways we could do it, right? Um, but here's your natural altar, which we're going to build the multi-block for next episode. So what we'll do is we'll wrap up here, we'll come back next episode, 
and we will um, we will build the multi-block structure. Hooray! Um, before we wrap up, though, why don't we go take a quick peek over on our colonists? How's everybody doing? Um, hey, look, it's getting some kind of cool thing happening here. I mean, this thing's definitely coming along, so he's doing a good job. He still hasn't made it so that I can access the the workstation, but that's okay. We'll get there, I'm sure. Um, still a good number of things to be placed, so he has a lot more work to do. But I guess we'll get there. And our composter level three was done, right? So we're just waiting on the research at this point so we can get the flower shop going. And that would be neat to do. So for now, that was my sign off. Oh, wow, there's actually a lot of ore around here. Um, just happened to notice that. And you'll, you'll notice that these glowing particle effects are an indication of a high aura area. So it's actually interesting. We happened to pick uh, a spot with a lot of aura to live in. That's neat right? But yeah, when you see these little green particle effects floating through the world, that means high aura. Okay. So for now, wrapping up for Intel Toy Signing Off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.